high pin difference. And both got one mark working. Anybody's ball game. Jenna's filling her mark right now for Team Gryffindor. She has three. Oh, I here. Okay. Really nice ball for Ashley LaPlante. A little tough leave for a seven drop though, but she's got some help. Well, while well, we got a moment here, I'd well, like to take a moment anyways. Recently in the Candlepin bowling world, we have a bowler that tied the world record for one, one single string. He rolled a 245 game at the Metro Bowl in Peabody, Mass. And that bowler is Chris Sargent. We'd like to congratulate Chris on a, his outstanding accomplishment. It was recognized as a world record. So there's only two bowlers now that have ever hit as high as 245, and that being Chris Sargent and Ralph Sem. Ralph is the owner of the French King Lanes in Irving, Massachusetts. And is president of the ICBA Association. Sargent's records don't stop just at the 245. He's had roughly 13 games over 200 through his 20-year career. And he's had over 500 on many occasions as well. Proving that he's definitely one of the top bowlers to ever play the game. And not to forget Chris's dad, Mike, who, who owns the record for five games with a, with a score that's well over 800. Is a Hall of Fame Candlepin bowler himself, so it runs in the family. But again, congratulations to Chris Sargent. He had six, six consecutive strikes on his way to that 245 with a, with a half. After five boxes, Dan, he was at 140. Amazing bowling. Yeah, I hit 240 before myself. It just takes me two strings. Takes me though. three strings, too. Yeah. No, congratulations, Chris. That was an amazing string. I'm just glad I wasn't still on his team. I would have owed him a dollar for the string. It takes my dollars all the time. I've seen some amazing bowling through the years. I, I would have loved to have seen that take place. I've seen David Godwin roll a 230-something game. I've, I've seen Tommy Olster hit over 500. As a matter of fact, I kept score for that. Yep. I've seen my father roll over a, a 200 a couple times, and I've seen Ulster hit a, a, a few 200 games, so it's, it's some fantastic bowling. We're approaching the halfway point. We're starting to get some marks up there now, too. Both teams have a mark in the last two boxes. Ariana DiBiasio and Connie Webster back up. It's funny, this game has never gotten away from either team. Right now, it's still a one pin match. Well, as we approach the halfway point, I'd also like to mention and thank the Fairway Sports World in Natick, Massachusetts for nearly 56 years of service. Uh, just two days ago, this past Friday, May 20th, the Fairway closed their doors forever. And we're truly going to miss, miss going into that building for whatever the case may be, tournaments, social bowling. Uh, it's, it's definitely a, a sad time for the, the Candlepin world, losing such a fine establishment as the Fairway on Route 9 and Natick. And so, Randy Macho Man Savage passed away too. Both yeah, the really week. amazing. It's a rough week for me, losing both the house and, and Macho Man. He was. I was also a fan of the uh, the Macho Man. Uh, snap into a Slim Jim. So I just want to thank Helen Salou again for 55 to 56 years of service. It was truly a pleasure going there from year to year. Yeah, it's a true house. I, I, I like the bowling there a lot in, in the last couple of years in some leagues. And, uh, you know, you got what you hit there and you never did anything fancy to it. No juice, no, nothing like that. It was always very fair. 
And she had a beautiful Christmas display she would put up every year. She sure did. People worth, it was worth thousands of dollars. And animatronics everywhere. People came from all over the place for that. All right. Well, we're at the halfway point, Dan. Gendro with a tough 40 half. He'll be looking to regroup in the second half. Boudreaux with a solid 65. The total is 265 to 264. Uh, Excuse me, 261. In favor of Gryffindor. And I get it right that time, You Dan. got it right. You're, you're right on top of things. All right. I'm, I'm getting a thumbs up from all the bowlers here. <laughs> Look at Ashley, the plant. Yeah, down the pins didn't give her a thumbs <laughs> up. They gave her a, a finger on that one. Whoa, what a shot, Dan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She what a great pump, try I mean. by the plant. That was worthy of an arm pump. That was a nice ball. Steez will take seven. She's at 46 after six. And in these one and four point matches, you don't need to make a mark every box. Every to make pin it important. Back. Right. There's picked up four pins right there. Yeah. And it's a one pin match. Ashley, Ashley LaPlante's at 48. Mr. T's up there now. Nathan is Mohawk versus The Daily Show. Nathan. Let him go first. Josh Daly looking for a big ball here. He's going to be in the corner. He's done that a couple times so far this string. Fontaine with a quarter pin hit. Drops five. Nathan's got some helpful looking wood if he can put the ball on the head pin. He may carry this shot. I know Nathan will be attending the State Awards Banquet for winning the All Events title. I also believe he won doubles, singles, and teams. He may have cleaned house this year, Dan. <laughs> well, you know, for his age, there aren't many better bowlers. I mean, look how accurate he is there with a good pinning. Nathan and his brother Aaron come in every Saturday and bowl between 15 and 20 strings each every week. So now you know how they got that good, right? And then practice, Aaron almost, uh, he almost made our show as well today. Just, just a little bit short. He's Aaron in a tough was age five group. pins short today. And he's in a tough age group, you know? Maybe when he gets on top of that age group, he'll have a better chance. Aaron also won the All Events title this year. I'll be making my regular appearance at that state banquet too, Steve, but it's for the chicken parm that they have there, really. Uh, yeah, I don't blame you there. Hey, what a great shot by Justine DiBiasio. The, they put on a great, great state banquet for the kids, and uh, it's really yes, do. It's a lot of fun to go watch all these kids getting their trophies, and uh, put on a good meal, reasonable price. It's a nice night of celebration for some spectacular bowling throughout the season. These kids love to compete. They put a lot of effort into their game. We had a score correction. Barry Sheffield looking to run this shot down. He's on it. Oh, just slid by. Didn't miss it by much. Ooh, look at this. That was a great try by Aaron Souza Jr. I was. I was looking here on the stats to see if there was anything on any state titles for any of the other kids. I may just have to ask them. Did you win any titles this year, Colleen? Doubles and teams. Very nice. Colleen Dumas with a doubles event and a team event championship this year. Great job. So a couple of nice breaks for the ladies, Dan. Yeah, both of our ladies have very makeable off-head pin leaves here. Nice shot. One three pockets the object. Just a little heavy. A little heavy, a little tight on the pocket. Connie Webster, same shot. Oh, what that was wrong with that? Perfect. What was wrong with that? That ball looked perfect. Sometimes there's no justice in this uh, in this game. Almost it can be frustrating at times. I almost would like to see a replay and see where the pin went. Ariana with 10, she's at 49 through 6. Connie Webster with a 9, she's at 51. Corey's overdue for a mark, I say. Back I to the anchor man. 
Corey's capable of putting three, four, five marks in a row together this half. He's thrown a lot of strikes earlier, so he's due for one of those. This will be Corey's last string in the youth divisions, and here's the hammer. Did I call it or did I call Big it? Big strike for Gendro. Boudreau wants to spare. I'm psychic. Unable to carry the four horsemen. That's a big ball for Gendro. Said this is Corey's last, last time he'll be bowling as a youth bowler. He graduated high school this year and he'll be moving on to bigger and better things. 